everything we just showed you uh, is free and there is no license needed, no payment, no encryption, nothing. No internet required as well. Yeah. You can be in your cabin, like in the middle of Wyoming, and uh, receive satellite data, no problem. And know the forecast as well, because you yeah. can make forecasts with uh, weather satellites, of course. Hi, I'm James Inzier, WRL at the German Hamfest, and I'm here with... Jacopo, India Uniform 1, Quebec Parpatango from Saddam. And if you're interested in satellites, we have something really, really cool to show all of you guys today, which is this software called Saddam. And he's going to tell us a little bit more about uh, this software, as well as maybe even take a look at some of the cool equipment they have um, set up here. So. Maybe just tell us quickly, like, what is SatDump for the people who haven't heard of it? SatDump is a software meant to decode satellites. And what I mean by satellites, I mean a lot of satellites. We support currently over 150 different satellite constellations, uh, including the popular NOAA, APT, NOAA POIS, uh, and Meteor uh, satellites that anyone can receive. Uh, on a 137 uh, megahertz uh, band. We also support SSTV, such as from the ESS. We support DATV from Q100 and terrestrial sources and much more. So right here we have uh, Saddam running on a remote station at my friend's house. Wow. And uh, he, uh, he has uh, an antenna with a rotator. So he's currently tracking the uh, GPM core satellite and he's, uh, the software is waiting for the satellite to raise from the uh, from the horizon in 56 minutes and then the software will automatically start decoding the data if there is any and producing imagery if there is any and then uh, after you're done uh, with all this you can uh, go back in the software and adjust the imagery to your taste such as to get temperatures or uh, specific enhancements or to get uh, other data such as radiation or images uh, for, from the sun. So, so that's a good question is what um, what are the different types of um, data that you might be receiving from satellites. It seems like images, telemetry, of course, lots of different things. We right? can decode uh, imagery and we can decode uh, either visible imagery, infrared, or uh, radar imagery, or microwave. Uh, there are several satellites that can do, uh, for example, imagery of the, of the sea or very high resolution imagery. Uh, even uh, amateur satellites can do that and Satam can decode them. Or uh, we can get uh, other data such as uh, space weather data, radiation data, uh, solar I, I flux. Believe, I believe you were saying that, so, yeah, that some of that data is actually so high quality it can even be used in scientific research. Of course, yeah, yeah, because for example, this image here has been correctly calibrated wow, that's and, uh, and um, processed such as this is uh, perfectly usable for weather forecasting. So is this, it looks like here we're looking at our passes. So this is maybe a sort of a schedule. Yeah, calendar, this is actually uh, the scheduler. So you can add in uh, as many satellites as you want. And uh, you can tell SATAM to automatically record a certain frequency, either in baseband or automatically run a pipeline to automatically decode the satellite. And it will actually uh, handle even multiple passes at the same time. If wow. it knows that your antenna is omnidirectional, it can record both passes at once. If it knows your antenna is a dish, so it I has to choose either one of the other or the other. It will choose the one which thinks he is the it's the best bet for uh, that current pass. So the one that is higher up or in the right direction. That's a nice feature. Well, speaking of um, antennas, I think you have some different things. Oh, we, can we? Yeah, can of take course. A look? Of course, this is get people excited as well because <laughs> of course. So we start with the basic antenna. This is a V dipole antenna. Uh, this can be used to uh, decode the normal. Uh, weather satellites on the VHF band, such as Meteor or NOAA APT. Then we have a new development from our friend, which is not actually a SATAM developer, but he works with us, uh, Richard from Austria, that has developed this foldable helicon antenna. And uh, it's designed to work with SATAM because SATAM also runs on smartphones. So he's designed it so that he can plug in his smartphone on uh, wow. uh, the SDR inside, and then he can just go outside, look at the satellite on the smartphone, and point it towards the satellite to receive the imagery at the same time. And this is completely foldable, so you can just put it in your backpack and go camping with it. Or, it looks uh, like he's 3D printed, basically, yeah, every uh, part on, exactly. on this. Yeah, exactly. This is entirely 3D printed, and the mesh is conductive mesh he got from AliExpress. This is our first prototype. Oh, wow, okay. So like normally where you would see the metal plate here, yeah, you see the conductive uh, mesh. Exactly. Exactly. This is a very robust uh, nylon mesh, so it can take some abuse if you take it like walking or uh, hiking. And, and, then, and what frequency range are you targeting? Uh, with this? this one is for the L band, so six, uh, 1700 megahertz. This can also probably do ghost, but we haven't tested it because we're not in the US. 
Uh, although one Australian has tested it on uh, the GK2A satellite in uh, on South Korea, and it performed very well on that satellite. And here we have uh, a more advanced antenna. This is a sat normal satellite dish that, like we would do for, for the TV satellite, but we added a custom-made feed for S Band, and it allows you to receive uh, imagery from Proba2. Uh, which is a solar Im imaging satellite from ESA, or UBS QSAT NG, which is a French satellite uh, from the company uh, Latmos that does high resolution imagery of the Earth. And you can see like the fields and homes and the uh, streets from the sky. They're all uh, free and uh, accessible. And then wow. here we have the more advanced stuff. So these are all X band feeds. Uh, the X-band feeds are uh, meant to decode satellites such as NASA's Aqua uh, or uh, Fengyun satellites from China or the new NOAA satellites such as NOAA 20, NOAA 21 or the upcoming Metopus G constellation. And this, uh, this is a prototype for, an, um, for a septum feed we made out of copper. This is the more refined version. And uh, this is the low noise amplifier to, deco to uh, amplify the signal. And then you connect it to our uh, um, X-Bound down converter that takes the 8 gigahertz in from the satellite and outputs a normal 1 gigahertz uh, signal to go into an SDR. And I believe you mentioned that your software works with many different types of SDRs. Yes. So we you... support basically all of them wow. uh, as soon as the manufacturer give, uh, gives us enough information to develop an, an API for it. That's amazing, and um, I believe you said that the project also open source, so people of can contribute, they can yeah. find it. Uh, we have everything on our website, sadam.org, and uh, the, the project is uh, hosted on GitHub, so you can uh, download it, compile it yourself, or uh, indeed make pull requests. We do uh, also plan on releasing a new update, which is uh, so huge, it's going to be called 2.0, because actually, of Good. course. Yeah. <laughs> it's like ChatGPT, you know? Exactly, you have to, have we to have to it. increment uh, the version. <laughs> and we do like feedback, so if you try out the software and you want to leave us feedback, you can contact us on our Discord, Matrix, or Twitters, and you can leave us feedback and to make the software well, even better. What would you say is maybe your advice for um, a lot of our newer folks that or they're just getting um, into satellite operating, they want to decode some satellite images, they want to start with some basic hardware. Well, like what would be the, f the first kind of things for someone to do? The first kind of things that you would want to do as a newbie is to get one of these. You can make it yourself. This is 3D printed, but you don't actually need the 3D print part. It's just, you know, the old antennas from the television, the rabbit ear antennas, and you just... Uh, have them at a specific uh, length, which is 54 centimeter, and then you connect them to a normal SDR, RTL SDR or any other SDR, and you can collect data from the uh, American NOAA uh, POSE satellites, such as uh, NOAA 18, uh, so, uh, sorry, NOAA 19, and NOAA 15, or the Russian Meteor M satellites that do high quality imagery, and uh, it is of course fully supported in Saddam and fully That's calibrated. Amazing. So, so as, long, and as long as you can get, I mean, you could actually just get one of these from a television receiver as yeah. long as it has the correct link to, Absolutely. to the frequency. Absolutely. If you have an old TV uh, at a scrapyard or flea market or whatever, you can just buy it and uh, steal the antenna, uh, uh, bend it in 120 degree and uh, have the right length. And that's just a great, that's a great way to get started before you move, move on, on to the more advanced stuff. <laughs> yeah, of yeah, course. Of course. And it's very, very easy. You can, I do this literally while waiting for my train or at the bus stop. Just whip out the antenna, wait for the satellite, and then you can decode it. That's awesome. What What would be your, um, I guess, anything else you think people should know about uh, SATDOM? Mm, I think you should definitely try it. Uh, and uh, satellites are awesome, and you should definitely look into them because there is a large, large potential uh, to have fun, both as a ham, as also, but also as a normal pe uh, person. Because remember, you don't need a ham license to receive any satellite data. And everything we just showed you uh, is free and there is no license needed, no payment, no encryption, nothing. No internet required as well. Yeah. You can be in your cabin, like in the middle of Wyoming, and uh, receive satellite data, no problem. And no, the forecast as well, because you yeah. can make forecasts with the weather satellites, of course. Well, thank you so much for the, the great overview. You're welcome. Of, thank you of for the interview. As well as all, all the great work you guys are doing. That's awesome.
Uh, we'll post this on our World Radio League socials as well to give you guys a shout out. And um, and he's actually the main developer, if you want okay, to. Okay, okay, great. <laughs> hey, I'm James Inzier, WRL. I'm here with... Alan, the F4 uh, LAU, who is... Uh, and I am the main uh, developer of Sandunk. Could you tell us, like, how did you start this project? Well, basically, like, uh, back around 2019, I got back into satellite decoding after I done, like, you know, just the standard NOA APT, which much everyone has done. And uh, the thing is, after doing a bit with that again, I wanted to decode the HRPT downlinks, which, which are 1.7 GHz and required, let's say, software that, that wasn't really the same and was more complicated. So I got all the hardware and got started, got so signals and everything, but then, I could only decode the satellites I could already decode on VHF because there wasn't any software available to actually decode the other learnings from like the Meetup and Fogon 3 Chinese satellites. So I ended up just trying to do it myself by using what I could find online and some code from other other people who had already tried to decode those and I managed to get data out and I published the decoders under GPL V3 open source license and pretty much it kind of sparked a new interest to do that, that side of things. And from there, people asked me to, I mean, I did a lot of other decoders for like the Proba 2 satellite you can see there. Yeah. Like the study made and a lot more, but I'm not gonna get into it. Otherwise it would take, take far too long. So, but that's kind of got quite popular. People asked me to do something a bit more ergonomic and a bit easier to use. And that's how Saddam came to be a thing, basically. And then you started supporting more, supporting yeah. more, supporting after, more. After Saddam started being a thing, I just started having more and more satellites. So yeah. now you can even like decode Landsat, if you know about it, to yeah. some extent. Yeah. You can also decode like, uh, the Meteor KMSS instruments, which is like a, a Russian, especially Russian satellite that, that can receive like a VHF, an X band, and such. And an X band, they actually transmit uh, 60 meters resolution images. So that's pretty great already, especially compared to what amateur used to do before. So, how many different bands of operation? Um, you said you have X band, uh, X band satellites supporting L band satellite, S band satellite. Basically, well, I can decode stuff in the 130 megahertz range, the 144 megahertz range, so just the amateur VHF band, in the UHF commercial and amateur band, as well as the more scientific band, which doesn't really exist anymore in most countries, but that's something else. I can decode a bunch around like the in map start frequencies, so like 1.6, 1.5. Wow. They also at 1.7 weather satellites, including like the GOES satellites that are extremely popular over the US. Yeah. And don't really exist anymore over the world, but that's another issue again. And I can also do 2.2, a, a few around 3.5, 5 gears, so like on C band. Of course, a few on K band, a few on X band that is not the 10 gears X band, but more around the 8 gears range, so like DSM stuff. And I also have a few supported in the like 20, to 26 or even like nearly 30 gigahertz range. That's a massive. So. <laughs> What's the biggest challenge with supporting such a wide range? Is does it, it, it does the, you feel like the protocols uh, start to shift a bit differently mm, as you go, or is it not really? It's more. It's more first of all like a lack of the documentation, which makes it like I can reverse engineering. Like, I do a lot of reverse engineering to support all of these because, for example, like if I think about Landsat, I did contact. contact uh, I, it's USGS directly, but while it's not illegal to record Landsat and get the images this way, they won't actually give out information on how to do it, so I have to reverse the engineer the entire compression algorithm, basically, mm -hmm. which is half standard, half custom, so... Yeah. Yeah, and the other thing is just that nowadays, especially due to, for example, NASA conducting more and more missions over to commercial companies, they basically kind of lose the openness they used to have and there are a lot of missions now that are, that are encrypted for literally no reason at all yeah and that, that's a big loss for uh sort of the technological experience experimentation and scientific <laughs> community and so even, the even for the scientific community as a whole because like the actual missions themselves actually benefit from people receiving data directly from them. If yeah. you think, for example, the image you see here is from the uh, NASA Aqua satellites, specifically from the MODIS instrument, which is basically, basically this, this instrument was only meant to image the Earth over a very long period of times to study like long time phenomena, so like basically specifically water, which is where the name Aqua comes from. Right. But 
since it broadcasted its data in real time on pretty much anyone, like from an university or just some random guy with an excellent setup, like me for example, could get the data and use it freely, it became a worldwide reference up to this day. Wow. And that's pretty, and especially now it's actually used in like weather forecasting and a lot of things that it wasn't even meant to be useful for. And yeah. nowadays we have like smaller clip sats and stuff that it's Could amazing be, when, you, when you provide the community with some great data. It's amazing all yeah. the things that they can I mean, find to do with it. Even like the amateur community likes deconning in because we can learn a lot on the technical side of things, but the scientific community also needs that data to be truly available. So when you launch like like NASA did, like actually with Jacopo just before we came here, we were at my place and we tried to find a few new satellites to decode. And we found, for example, the pre fire mission, which is like basically just a copy, a slightly better copy of the instrument on the current NOA satellites. So wow. it's nothing special. The data is public, but yet the downlink is encrypted. So honestly, it's kind of ends up being useless yeah. for a lot of stuff. So you get the idea. Do you have an idea of how many total, total satellites could be supported by SATDOM today? Well, it's hard to say without actually looking, but I oh, mean like today? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's easily over 150, probably nearly 200 da different downings. That's incredible. So yeah, it's, and if for people who are newer and like looking for a pass, you know, we were talking about how you, know, you could get started with some pretty basic equipment, but with that much support, um, it's very easy to find, uh, to find a pass and get started. Yeah. yeah. I mean, basically all you need is like 30 euros worth of equipment with like a V-Dipole, like that one is a pretty crappy one, but whatever, it gets the job Yeah, it gets the job done. done. Yeah. And just like an RTL SDR, so, and from there with like around, let's say a bit under 200 euros, you can already get like L-Band and S-Band, which already give you much better images, like those you can see here, again, up yeah. here, which is also from another French satellite doping near Paris, that I can get the data from. Wow, and uh, it's... So I take it you're from France. Yes. I'm judging by the call sign, yeah. <laughs> and I think you guys have a pretty international team then, right? Yeah, I mean, especially because, like, especially in that field, field, like, it doesn't really matter where you are. That's the great thing so. about, yeah, that's the great thing about amateur radio is uh, radio waves have a way of not really respecting, uh, you know, country boundaries very much. So. It's as, if, it's as if they didn't really exist or make sense. Exactly, exactly. It kind of shows, even with, like, what we support and the kind of help we get because we did get help from people from pretty much anywhere, from like the US to Russia to Brazil to China, like even from more official organizations. That's so, incredible. And there's also the fact that everything you see here can be on the satellite either be received globally or only be received in specific places. So um, being more intentional kind of makes sense to spot more stuff anyway. Right. Because like I, I'm not in the US, so I can actually receive the GOES satellites properly. So if somebody wasn't there to give me data and help me out. I couldn't actually support them at all. Yeah, um, thank you um, yeah. so, so, and, uh, so much for your actually, time. Actually, if you want to find uh, Sandem, you can just go on like sandem.org on GitHub and feel free to like report bugs or whatever if you do use Sandem. Be guess. careful what you ask for, but yeah. <laughs> no, it's actually, actually the, it's kind of the opposite. Like, not, I've had people not report bugs because they didn't want to bother me. Except it ended, it ended up being more of a problem not to know about it. Okay. I've been to. Yeah, and then you find it later, and they said, "Oh, I I noticed this bug. I just didn't wanna I didn't wanna say anything because." Yeah. <laughs> and especially when they say it's been like two years. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so but much. Uh, I'm on. very Thanks impressed. Well. Very yes. impressed. We've helped over 60,000 students get their US FCC amateur radio license, and we can help you too, no matter your age or educational background. Go to www.hamradioprep.com and try a free lesson today.